Hello, I'm D Swank, and today we're talking about Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. The Court of Fools played this on Halloween, and I enjoyed it. Also, as a disclaimer, I got it for $15 while it was on sale, as it had just come to Steam. The game is an Epic Store first game, and has had three free DLCs come out for it. And if you get the Ecto Edition, you get three DLCs as well. I'm a big fan of the Ghostbusters franchise. I do feel that the 2016 movie was the weakest outing, with the exception of some of the old and Slimer cartoons from the end of the 80s cartoon era run. So, this is coming from someone who greatly enjoys the franchise. The game is an asymmetric multiplayer Ghostbusters game that can be played solo. You have a selection of ghosts ranging from familiar ones like Slimer and the Gluttony Ghost from Afterlife to classics like Terror Dog or Sam Hain. There are some others that are not as iconic. You have access to all sorts of cosmetic customizations that are reminiscent from the action figures from the 80s. The Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon. Um, a lot. Just a lot of options there. And you unlock them by leveling up and completing one of two types of side quests. A research quest or a side hustle. Through research you can unlock shells for your gear or upgrades for your gear. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Side hustles give you a large chunk of XP and unlock epic or legendary cosmetics. As you play through the game and game levels on your account, which is 1 through 100, you unlock ghost types and cosmetics alongside your secondary gear, which can be like a grappling gun or the ecto goggles. Uh, gas grenade that slows the movement of the ghosts, a sensor, a pylon that shoots the proton beam at spooky things that enter into its range, things like that. The trap, the PKE meter, the pack, and the proton thrower wand item are each separate things that can also gain levels as you use them. As you do this, it unlocks all but the final upgrade for them. The final upgrade being locked behind the research contracts. The shells I mentioned before are unique skins for the equipment. There are five shells. You start with one of them unlocked. It is the classic uh, from the original movie appearance for your items. Then there's the shells that make everything look like they're from the 2016 movie. There's one that makes them look like they're the equipment from the real Ghostbusters cartoon or the extreme Ghostbusters cartoon. And the last one is the fan shell. And the fan shell makes everything look like it's made out of cardboard. It's quite cute. You have your ghost types that unlock at various levels. The first one's at levels 5 and 1 is unlocked through the somewhat limited story event that go through. As you play as one of the ghost types, you can unlock further variants. Each one has three or four variants that have special uh, each one has a unique ability in it, and you will also unlock color palettes for that type. I feel that the gameplay is quite solid. As the Buster, you can't die, but you get scared and the screen goes grayscale. If you're with the other Busters, you don't get as scared easily, and it eventually goes away the more you're with the other Busters. Your trap has a battery life, so when you throw it out, you press the, you open it up, and 
it starts draining its battery life. You pick it back up, it recharges. The proton beam takes a bit when it hits the ghost. It has to hit the ghost for a set period of time before it tethers it. It does have an overheat option. And it can be a juggle to catch some of the ghosts, especially when functioning with the AI team. The PKE meter lets you scan an area, it kind of directs you at the ghosts, and you have a pulse ability that can stun ghosts, knock them out of a item that they have possessed, or uh, damage rifts. And we'll get to those in a bit. And of course there's the trap, and each one has like four or five upgrades to it that all have four or five upgrades in that. So, uh, the trap, you can increase the battery, for example. Now, as a ghost, your goal is to haunt the map. Well, as a buster, your job is to stop the ghost. As a ghost, your job is to try and haunt the map. You have a bar across the top that is a percentage bar. You want to fill that up. You also start with three gates. You can possess a prod object, like in Prop Hunt. Uh, you can also haunt the objects and they'll move around so the Ghostbusters might think you are possessing that one, but you're not. Each ghost has a unique ability that I mentioned before, and it, they help it in its attempt to haunt, haunt the map. This looks interesting. You go around, you scare civilians to chase them out, you slime things, stuff like that. If you are caught, you can break the tether th or escape the trap through a quick time event. But if you're pulled into the trap, you come out of a rift and that rift is destroyed. The s rifts start by being hidden in artifacts that look like a book a trophy, a weird statue, a doll, and the busters can find them and destroy the artifacts, and then they have to burn the rift down. And it can take quite a bit of time, usually two minutes or so if it's just one buster. It can take 30 seconds if all four of them are hitting it. The ghost can move the artifacts into other locations to hide them. So if ghost a ghost there. has been, uh, a rift has been found, the ghost can risk running in front of the other busters to grab the rift and try and hide it in another object. Now, you do all this, you jump out, you spook civilians, you possess things, things like that. When you spook civilians and they leave the, th the map your haunting rate goes up by 5% and as you haunt rooms the meter goes up as well and when it hits 100 a countdown timer starts it starts at 120 seconds with 15 seconds removed for each remaining rift and then all rifts are, dis are removed from the map as that countdown timer is going down, if the busters catch the ghost, the busters win. If the ghost... Well, if the runner... Blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. I tongue-tied myself there. If the ghost isn't caught before the timer runs out, the ghost wins. That's how the ghost wins. If the ghost is caught when there are no remaining rifts left, the busters win. Having played this game solo and with a friend it is greatly improved by the people you play with, but is a solid game for a mission or two on your own. Just, I'm bored, I want to play a mission. Get done, leave. I feel that it was money well spent, but your mileage may vary. Me being a big franchise fan, I'm going to like it a lot. 
I know some people dislike the publisher and distrust their ability to keep the servers up. I acknowledge that, but I've already gotten my money's worth. So if you're a Ghostbusters fan, I personally feel it's definitely worth the money. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the game, and I will see you again next time. Until then, bye bye